Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. It's Josh. Um, okay, first things first. Um, let me do a wrist check. Uh, today I'm wearing my Tissot Heritage 1948 automatic chronograph. Um, and I've got mine on this gorgeous tan leather alligator strap from Shinola. Um, and I put it on the alligator strap because to me, the straps, you know, the options that come with the watch, so the dark mahogany brown or the black leather, they just really create too much contrast with this face, and I love the vintage look, so I put mine on a tan alligator strap. I think it looks so much better. Um, if anybody's interested, you know, please leave a comment, or, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about it uh, in another video. You know, on that note, uh, because we, I think there are a couple of new people, a bunch of new people here on my channel after my Tiso video, um, this is this you know my youtube channel is not i'm not you know a professional youtuber um i am a senior art director at a tech firm and so this is just a hobby um so i got a lot of messages on instagram and a couple comments would you please review you know blah 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 blah, blah. and you know i would love to i honestly would would love to 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 you know cre just make videos and create videos and you know show you all the watches that you all want to see but you know, this is not, unfortunately, this is not a profession. I don't make a cent off of this YouTube channel. You know, nothing on here, um, either watches or, or the the other luxury goods that I talk about, none of it is sponsored. You know, I don't get anything for free in exchange for talking about it or whatnot. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there because there were some people, you know, oh, can you please, you know, review this or what do you think of this? And, you know, you guys, I just, again, this is not a professional thing. This is just a hobby. Um, something that I enjoy doing on the side when I have time. Um, so anyway, with that being said, um, what I'm going to show you all today is my brand new Seiko SARX035. Um, as you might be able to tell by the box, this is a Japanese domestic market watch, so it's not, you know, officially sold here in the United States. Um, so this is not really a true unboxing because... Um, you know, I've had it out for a couple of weeks, um, and I've been wearing it around. This was my 25th birthday present from my wonderful partner, John. Um, he has learned not to shop for me, but he wanted to get me something special for my 25th birthday. So, you know, he said, what would you like? And I said, well, I'd really like a Seiko. Um, you know, I got an Omega when I got my job promotion earlier this year. Um, so I've got, you know, the really fantastic Swiss watch, and now I was sort of looking at I really, you know, would like to have a Seiko. Also, apologies for the lighting, it's pouring cats and dogs outside, so there's not much great natural lighting in here, so I'm uh, gonna do my best with what we've got. Um, again, you know, this is not professional, it's just, just the hobby. Um, so in here we've got the Seiko instruction manual that is all in Japanese. I do not speak or read any of it, so hey-ho. Um, then we've got our international guarantee in here. Um, I've already taken out the warranty card and saved that away with all the rest of the, you know, warranty and authenticity cards for the luxury goods that I have. Um, I tend to keep my watches not in their original boxes, so chances are I will just, you know, close this up and never see it again. So let's just put this to the side. And now let's take a look at this beautiful, beautiful watch. Um, so like I said, oh, and let's look at the tags real quick. So we've got one that talks about Comfotex. You know, it feels more comfortable as you wear it. And then we've got the Presage product tag. And this, as you can see, is the SARX 035. Retails for 100,000 yen, which is about $800 here in the US. Uh, made in Japan. And it's got the uh, Caliber 6R15 movement. I have a couple feelings about that movement, so I'll talk about that as we get into the video here. You know, one of the reasons that I opted to go for this watch was I really love the Presage line. And, you know, these watches are sort of what, you know, some people call like the Baby Grand Seiko because of the just intricate, intricate and immaculate design of these watches specifically on the bracelet, but also just, you know, on the face, on the case, and it's got some dust on it. Um, just that gorgeous, gorgeous detailing around the whole watch. You know, everything on here honestly feels so premium, 
so luxurious and you know again this watch is only like eight hundred dollars you know here in the u.s uh we we or i got mine from say japan and um i think i paid like 788 in total u.s dollars and that included shipping um got here in three days through dhl which is incredible for you know international product so the reason that I wanted to go with the SARX 035, um, and if you're familiar with the Presage, Presage line, um, you know that they're, I think that the better known model is the SARX 055 and 057, um, which is the Baby Grand Snowflake, and then there's a black version of that as well. Um, the reason that I chose not to go with that, because those are around $1,000, so $300 more expensive than this watch here. The reason I decided not to go with it is I'm, I am I'm maybe the only person, you know, here on YouTube or in the watch world that doesn't think that the Snowflake is beautiful. I think it's a really nice watch. I think the detail is just immaculate. But for me, that Snowflake texture face, and I'll put a you know picture here in the video, that Snowflake texture face to me, I don't know what it is. It doesn't. It doesn't work for me. I really like watches with a black lacquered face. So you know, my Omega's got a black lacquered face, um, and since this is going to be like my primary dress watch, um, I kind of wanted it to have it too. So then, you know, you might be saying, "Well, there's you know the black version of the Snowflake," and yes, it's true that there is the black version of the Snowflake, but it looks identical to this. It's got the same. 6R15 movement that's in this watch here. The only difference that I can tell between this, the, the SARX 035 and the SARX 057, um, doesn't want to focus with me here, is that the 057 has the titanium casing and bracelet. Um, again, I might be the only person on YouTube or on the face of the planet that doesn't like titanium watches, but I don't know, there's something to me about titanium watches, when you feel it in your hand, you know, it's significantly lighter than a stainless steel watch, and to me, that sort of makes it feel cheap. I don't know why, that's not, and that's not a truth or anything, that's just how I feel when I pick one up. So I figured I'd save the $300, I'd forego the titanium case, and I'd just get this one. And I actually prefer it, you know, if you look down at the bottom here, you can see that there's the automatic word in script. And on the 057, or that the other, you know, titanium baby Grand Seiko, um, it, the word is, I think, just printed in, like, you know, a serif font. Um, so personally, I like the heft, I like the look of this one, and I'm really happy with my decision. I'm glad I didn't spend the $1,000, because in every other way, this is the same watch. So the base bracelet design is exactly the same. Um, it's a beautiful bracelet. So each of these individual links, so you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, five across the um, bracelet here are individual pieces. They are solid end links, as you know, you would demand at this price point. The bracelet drapes really nicely. Um, a couple of people had questions about that Tissot that we looked at not long ago, um, and how that bracelet drapes. And again, this is you know, retails around the same price. This one is just. I mean, I would compare this, honestly, to watches in the, you know, $1,500 range, just in fit and finish. One of my favorite things about this watch is the dial, um, and you can kind of see it there. What's really neat about this watch is it has both a lacquered face, so you get, you know, the reflections from whatever, you know, is reflected in the watch, but then you also have under that a really subtle sunburst face as well. And that, to me, just makes this watch so, so special. I think it's, I don't really have words, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the reason that these are called, you know, the Baby Grand Seiko is because if you look at all that detailing, like the really minute marks there between each second or minute um, indice on the, on, the, on the dial, um, you look at the way that these, um, the the indices here for, for on the hour they're actually there's there's so much intricate detail in here the um it's not really coming out so i'll put a picture in here each of the indices are like like they look like they were laser cut you know like like perfectly precise and isn't that typical of the japanese but 
each of them is also brushed on the top of them. So in addition to being incredibly thin and incredibly precisely machined, there's another layer of texture on there that I think is just so incredible. Um, the Seiko word itself, uh, that might be better. <laughs> the Seiko word itself is a raised um, applied logo there. Um, again, which kind of reflects off the lacquered surface. And then, if you look at the hands in certain lighting, you can really tell. The half of the hand is matte. Oh, there we go. So if we look at the minute hand that um, is over the word automatic, the bottom half, you know, bottom being this direction, the half that's towards me is a mirrored finish, you know, like a polished finish. Then the other half is a matte finish, which I've never seen before. Um, so there, if we look, you can see how the, the hands react differently, even though we're holding the watch at the same angle, now the matte finish is pointed toward me, and you can see just how differently the light reacts to that, um, finishing on that surface. This is, oh, I don't, I, <laughs> this watch is so incredibly beautiful in so many ways, and you know what, I... There were a couple of people who, you know, when I bought, when I did my Omega video, they were like, why did you buy that when a brand new one just came out? The new one is better. The new one is more expensive. The new one is newer. I don't buy things for the price. You know, I buy things that fit my kind of style aesthetic and minimal, you know, really refined kind of, you know, watches and bags and whatnot. That is my style aesthetic. And this watch fits so perfectly into that aesthetic that it's... It's crazy, and I'm I'm so, so glad that I got this watch. So let's look at the back here. Uh, the bracelet, again, is... So the, the inner links are kind of these angled, you know, like prism-like links, and then the outer links here um, are rounded on the edge, and you can probably see that there. Um, so it's a really, really nice kind of contrast of shapes, of forms, of, you know, polished versus brushed finishing. Um, on this watch, you get a really, really beautifully machined clasp. Um, the top of the clasp sits flush with the edge of the bracelet, which is a kind of a concern for people that are looking at the um, SARB 33, the SARB 033. Um, this one has a really nice push action clasp. Everything sits perfectly flat on the inside. <laughs> My phone will focus with me here. Everything there sits perfectly flush. Oh, that's better. Um, just all around, such a high quality feeling watch. You know, I would put this honestly up on par with like a Tag Heuer. Um, I had a couple of questions on the Tissot video about, you know, does the bracelet on the Sea Star feel more like a um, like a Seiko or a Tag Heuer? And I responded to those questions by saying it felt about in between. Definitely didn't have the draping and kind of the, you know, actuation of the Tag Heuer bracelet, but I didn't think it was as bad or as cheap feeling as, you know, the Seiko, the Seikos that we get here in the U.S. This one, though, definitely is on par with the Tag Heuer, the best Tag Heuers, you know, that I've seen. Um, let's look at the case back here. So this one, again, if we, <laughs> if I can get some focus uses the 6R15 movement. The only complaint that I have with this watch, and it's really a minute thing, is that this exhibition case, which is huge, you know, like look at how big that is, and you can see all of that detailing in there. The exhibition case back is um, the Hardlex crystal, and then the front is sapphire. But the back is Hardlex, and not that that bothers me, because again, this is just gonna be sitting, you know, against my wrist as I wear the watch. Um, I think at, at $800, it's totally forgivable. I would have liked to see them do a sapphire crystal on the back, but you know, it's really not a big deal. I mean that, shake this around here. That to me is beautiful. I love looking down at it uh, when I take the watch off. Um, you know, it's those small details, honestly, that make this watch so special. Um, talking about crystals, though, so this, um, just like the Snowflake and just like a lot of the Grand Seikos, this has the AR coating um, that almost makes the crystal in many lights invisible. 
Um, it's sort of hard to tell when you look at it though because, you know, again, you're getting the reflection off of that lacquer dial. So sometimes it does look like you're getting a reflection on the crystal, but it's not. You're really just getting the reflection on that dial. And um, I think my camera, you know, looking at it on camera is changing things. But like here, you can really see that crystal, that sapphire crystal disappears and it is just... <laughs> you know, I say, I say gorgeous and, and, you know, this watch is just amazing and I don't really have any other adjectives for it, but that's what it is. It's just incredible. People who are looking at this watch, maybe you already have, or maybe you're, you, you know, you've been looking at like an SARB 033 and, uh, you know, the SARB is probably, is usually around like three to four to five hundred dollars, right? If I were you and you were me and all things being equal, if you can afford, you know, to spend an extra three or four hundred bucks um, on this watch, I would highly recommend it. It's not that I don't like the Sarb 33, and it's not that because it has the same movement, also has a sapphire crystal, but I think that for, you know, again, another three to four hundred dollars, I think that you're getting a much, much higher quality, much more finished watch with, you know, the SARX 035 um, here. And likewise, if you're looking at the snowflake and you can do without that snowflake face, so let's say you're looking at the black version of the snowflake, which again, I think is the SARX 057. If you're looking at that one, do yourself a favor and really think about this guy, because honestly, to me, if you can do without the titanium, you know, construction, this one, this stainless steel case does have all of the dia shield, you know, kind of that scratch resistant coating. And I can attest to that, to its um, abilities. Like I'm looking at it here. Uh, you know, I haven't worn this out like incredibly freak. I mean, I, you know, I haven't worn it on like a daily basis, but as you all might know, I'm not, you know, I'm not super precious with my, with my things. And I am not seeing any real major scratching, even hairline scratching, honestly, at this point. Um, which to me says that there is something going on because my Omega that I also got, uh, relatively recently, um, definitely has some scratching and I can even show you with this, with my TSO. If you look at like right around here on the edge, um, all along this side, like you can really see the scratching, just the real hairline scratches that I get on my watches because I'm not, you know, crazy careful with them. So for this Seiko to not be showing too much wear yet, even, you know, just the hairline scratches, to me says that there must be something to that coating that they put on there. Um, so that's about it. This has kind of been just the first look. I'll report back if I have any, you know, problems or thoughts later on down the line about this watch. But um, this has been my brand new Seiko SARX 035. Um, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Thank you and welcome aboard to all of my new subscribers. Um, I always say it, but you know, please feel free to message me on Instagram, uh, comment down in the video below. I do always respond to comments. Um, I try to respond to messages as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I just, I honestly feel that if you take the time to leave a comment or message me and watch this video that I, you know, I owe it to you to answer that question that you might have. Um, so thanks again for watching and I will see you guys soon. Take care.